In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, welcome to each and every one of you as we gather here as the church on the corner of Alma and Victoria Street, on YouTube, wherever you may be watching this broadcast. I give thanks for your presence with us. I thank you for sharing these services with people and for taking the time to make worship a part of your weekly life. I want to share with you that today's service will be a service of communion, and so at any point in the next little while, if you want to hit pause and go find some elements that you could use for communion, such as bread and juice, I'd invite you to do that. And then we'll share in the service of the table later in this service today online. Please join with me in our call to worship. Good people of the church, lift up your eyes and see have you not seen? Have you not heard? Our God greets us here. Good servants of the Most High, open your ears to hear. Have you not seen? Have you not heard? Our God meets us here. Good children of the light, open your hearts and know what it means to delight in God. For we have seen, heard, and known from the beginning to the end. Our God is. And I would invite you now to join with me in our opening prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, creator of the universe, and then some, we call on you, you who greet us here, we give you thanks for making it possible to gather and to ponder your eternal mysteries. Make us creatures of this time and space, ready collaborators with your endless grace. Amen. All of us have our thresholds, places beyond which it can be so difficult to move. For many of us, Generous giving represents such a threshold. Some of us have given. Some of us have never given before. Some of us want to give, but have no idea how. Giving takes so many shapes, but like any spiritual discipline, the key is for that gift to grow. We grow in our knowledge of God. We grow in our faith. If we aren't already, may we not seek to grow in our giving as well in the time we give, in the money we give, in the love we give. Let's ponder this growth, and may God shine God's light across the threshold so that nothing can hold us back from this growth. I want to now share a prayer for the offering that has been given by you, the faithful, in thanksgiving for God's blessings to us in this world as we return the blessings so that they may be shared. 
God of all that is, all we have, all we are, we give. We give these gifts as we reach across the thresholds of our concerns. We give these gifts knowing that they will give so much more. Through Jesus Christ. Amen. Our communion hymn today is The Servant Song, and it's sung by Laura Lee Carrier. And the words will be on the screen. Thank you, Laura Lee, and thanks to all of you for singing along. That is one of my favorite hymns, and I learned it at L'Arche Cape Breton, and it's always stayed with me as, as, a, as a symbol of our service to one another. Now I'd like to welcome our friend Debbie Crean, who is currently in British Columbia. However, thanks to technology, she can be part of our service here in Moncton. When she recorded this reading, she said, I had no problems technically doing this. The dogs, parrot, and the rainstorm made for a few takes. It's like Noah's Ark in a motorhome. Thank you for being with us, Debbie. Today's reading is from Isaiah 40, verses 21 to 31. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain, and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught, and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown. Scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows upon them, and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me, or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see. Who created these? He who brings out their host and numbers them calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? 
The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youth will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is a reading from Mark's Gospel, chapter 1, verses 29 to 39. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came, he took her by the hand, and he lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick and possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered at the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons, and he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place to pray. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. He answered, Let us go to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. May God's understanding be added to our reading of these words. Amen. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. There's a writer by the name of James Baldwin who wrote books and he wrote poems. And this is a poem that he wrote called Amen. No, I don't feel death coming. I feel death coming going. Having thrown up his hands for the moment, I feel like I know him better than I did. Those arms held me for a while, and when we meet again, there will be that secret knowledge between us. It's this poem about someone who has been within the grasp of death, and yet who did not die. If one was to enter into that story in Mark's Gospel about the healing of Simon's mother-in-law from a fever, you get the feeling that something serious was happening here. I wonder if the doctor had already been called and done all they could. I wonder if the women in the community had already been there to offer their comfort and care, and still the fever did not break. Then I wonder what it was that Simon's wife had said to him. Had she sent word to Simon while they were all in the synagogue? Jesus has just left the synagogue. He healed a man there from a demon, as we read last week, and now he walks to this home where sickness has visited. It says that Jesus simply went to her, and he took her by the hand, and you can just picture him lifting her up out of the bed, And her first response to that healing was to serve. And it's not to say that this was the role of of someone like her in that society. It is to say that her offer to serve was in response to being served. The power of God is known in service to others, in the difference we can make and choose to make. Acts of service are our praise. She was now restored to her function within that society. As James Baldwin wrote when she was living, she felt death going. Of the hundreds of verses in Mark's gospel, roughly one third of them are about healing. 
Healing is central to the kingdom of God from Mark's understanding. Thirteen of the eighteen miracle stories in Mark's gospel are about healing. By now, Jesus is at, is at the beginning of, of his ministry. He's been baptized. He's been tempted. He's gone from healing in a public place like the synagogue to a private place like someone's home. He has healed someone who had the symptom of suffering from spiritual chaos. He's healed someone who has suffered because of physical pain. One was a man, one was a woman. The point being made is that God's healing love is available for all, no matter who they are or where they are. And that point is driven home further when Mark Mark emphasizes that the whole city was gathered there. It doesn't say the whole city of whatever denomination it was. It was just the whole city of people who needed to be healed. People who were brought to him who had sickness. People who were brought to him who had been possessed. From the general to the specific. Barbara Brown Taylor writes that the problem with miracles is that they're hard to, mit- hard to witness without wanting one yourself. They're also dangerous because we all know people that we've prayed for. People who want a miracle, who desperately deserve a miracle and don't get them. I think that's where I draw strength in this passage from Mark's Gospel is that our emphasis in faith tends to be around physical healing, but today we're hearing stories of not just physical healing, but people's mental health as well. I think that we should be using this language more and more in the church because as we're seeing with this pandemic, it's harder and harder to stay positive when there seem to be so many setbacks and risks to public health on a daily basis. One of the things that I've come to miss in church when we're physically together are the prayers that we do. And, you know, when I come down from the pulpit and I I open it up because I think the prayers of the people should be among the people and for the people. And I just, some Sundays it's easier than others, but I I love the, the Sundays when everybody just starts saying what's on their mind and in their hearts. People who offer up those prayers that they have for family and friends, for places in this world that are in need of healing, for people in the hospital, for people who've just suffered a loss. And the Sundays when people weren't so forthcoming with their prayers, I'd always make the joke uh, that I was a minister, not a dentist. And Dr. Cedric Allaby always, <laughs> always liked that joke. Cedric told me that... Um, His twin brother was the exact opposite of what he was because he was a dentist and his brother was a chicken farmer and chicken didn't have teeth. Anyway, it's hard to explain, but in that moment when I'm asking for prayers and people are offering them up, there's always a group that you can see of people whose, whose eyes are filled with tears, whose faces are filled with pain, who don't have the ability in that moment to say out loud, what it is they need healing for. And so I just nod at them. I just do a quick and acknowledge the pain. Acknowledge it before God in that holy place. And what strikes me about those moments when we pray together is that we're acknowledging God's promise and possibility for healing. That we're willing to walk down that road towards healing. I mean, I know, and I'm sure some of you know, what it's like when you're firmly entrenched and you're not open to the possibility of being healed and that the wound itself is, is what feels good until it doesn't anymore and you decide you can't live like that anymore. And in today's world, we're so hyper-focused on sickness and how this virus is swooping around the planet time and time again. And we see images on television and our screens of healthcare workers being overwhelmed and we feel so powerless to do anything about it. And then we hear the, st- the statistics of those who have died, not just from COVID, but from other diseases and from accidents as well. And we wonder about this world in which we live, this created world that we believe and why there is so much pain. But despite all of that, Jesus does invite us into this strange world where the promise of God's power to heal in all places and in all people and all circumstances is ever constant. It is a strange world. It's a hurting world in which we are invited to expect the unexpected and dare to hope and pray and to receive strength beyond our own as we face these losses in our lives and in our world. 
Debbie read from the book of Isaiah these words that give pause to wonder. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told to you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their hosts and numbers them, calling them by name because he is great in strength, mighty in power. No one is missing. James Baldwin's poem is about death going. And death is going because you're still living, you're still praising, and death has no place there. And despite it all, despite the reason that you're there, and I'm here, and the world has gone sideways, today you and I are living and praising God. And as we face our pain and our loss, remember, no one is missing. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is everlasting God. May God be with all of you. I want to welcome you to this service of communion today as we gather in the places where we find ourselves during this red phase of recovery. And since you're taking part in this communion service at your kitchen table or perhaps in your living room on your coffee table or someplace else, I thought it'd be more appropriate for me to share communion from my office as opposed to in the sanctuary of the church. It just feels a little more like we're doing this together. And I want to also invite you to use whatever elements that you have present in your home. Jesus used the ordinary food of his day, bread and wine. And so we often have the bread and juice, of course, in church. But whatever you have at home that you can break and pour. And if you don't have anything with you at all, if you're watching this from work, perhaps, just share in this moment with us. And the grace of the table is present for all of us when we gather together as a community even online. So thank you for, for sharing in communion this way. I have a, a shortened communion service, and um, I think it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful service, and I want to offer today for our words. May God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the God we love. It is right and neat and beautiful and holy that we should in ceaseless joy give our thanks and praise to you, holy and merciful God, through Jesus Christ our Savior. And so in grateful procession of endless praise with the church that is and was and shall be forevermore, we glorify you, joining this unending song, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, eternal one. You sit above and through within the circle of the earth, setting light into being, casting the stars in the sky, founding the evolving earth and all that dwell within it. Limitless is your power, and great is your wisdom. You look upon the lowly as your most cherished creatures. You visit upon the downtrodden with presence and grace and the promise of eternal justice. You sent to us your own child, Jesus, who reached into unexpected places calling women beyond the limits of their times, equipping men for nurturing love, welcoming children into your holy embrace. And so we, re we recall that on the night of betrayal and desertion, the light of the world took bread and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in like manner, after supper, Jesus took the cup and after giving thanks, gave it to them, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, 
poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it for the remembrance of me. Life's greatest feast before us. We excitedly proclaim Christ has died, Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Dear God, you transform all that is before you so that at the touch of your grace, we are never the same. Dear God, you illumine, you bring light to all peoples, light the nations, light into our hearts, light on your way. Dear God, we pray for your spirit to transform, illumine, bless. Make these ordinary gifts of bread and cup into the extraordinary presence of Christ with us. In so doing, hold us as your own. Renew us as your people for the sake of the world you love. For all honor, glory are yours, O God, through Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit in your glorious creation, both now and forever. Amen. I invite you now to pray the words that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ, broken for us. The blood of Christ, poured out for us and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. The gifts of God, for the people of God, come, for now all things are ready. I invite you now to take the bread and to eat it. take the cup and to drink. Jesus Christ, bread for the journey. Jesus Christ, the cup of life. Let us pray. We have been fed, Holy One, by your presence. We have been led, eternal one, by your light. May we bask in this glow, now and forever. Amen. And now as we end this time together, we've prayed, we have sung, we've shared in the sacrament of communion, we've reflected on scripture, and now it's our time to depart this hour. I thank you for being with us and for making this service a part of your life. May God bless you in your day. May God bless you in your heart and the things that you struggle with. And may you be the blessing to the people in your life who desperately need a word of hope. May God bless and keep you. May God's face shine through yours. And may the glorious triune God protect and keep you all the days long. Amen.